Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we're going to take a withdrawal from the Knowledge Bank. On episodes like these, I take you through a specific aspect of the Commander format. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today let's go over some staple substitutions. The commander format has plenty of great staples but some can get a bit expensive. So for some of these staples it might be a good idea to have a budget alternative in mind. For these alternatives, I'm only going to be considering cards that can be used in the exact same deck as the staple. So they either have to be the same color, or they have to be an artifact or a land. And these alternatives are going to be significantly cheaper than the staple. First up is perhaps one of the most iconic cards in Commander with Cyclonic Rift. It's an instant for one in a blue, and it says return target and non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. And it has an overload cost of 6 in a blue. Its last reprint was in Modern Masters 2017, and its current cost is $18.85. Cyclonic Rift is definitely a staple for a reason. In a multiplayer format like Commander, you get a ton of value from casting this one card. When you overload it, you're returning everyone else's non-land permanents back to their hand. But your non-land permanents are going to stay on the battlefield untouched. You set all of your opponents back to square one, launching you way ahead of everyone else. And you can do all this at instant speed. The flexibility of this card is absolutely absurd. You can use this defensively to save yourself while setting your opponents back or you can use it offensively to set yourself up for the win. There have even been people calling for this card to be banned with just how impactful and one-sided it can be. With very few exceptions, this card should pretty much be going in every single blue deck. But at nearly $20, there are plenty of people out there who don't want to spend that much on a card. Now, obviously, there's no direct replacement for this card. But let's look at some budget alternatives that you can make do with. First up, there's River's Rebuke, which is a sorcery that costs 4 blue blue and says return all non-land permanents target player controls to their owner's hand. At just 98 cents, this is much more affordable than Cyclonic Rift. In fact, there are people who have called this a fair Cyclonic Rift. Unlike Cyclonic Rift, this only affects one player. On top of that, you can only cast this at sorcery speed. So if you're going to cast it, you need to commit to it on your turn. Now this can still be a very impactful card and provide you a ton of value. If one player is way ahead of everyone else, you can set them way back. So with this, you're more so evening the playing field for the other players instead of just launching yourself ahead of everyone. There have been plenty of situations where this card has come in huge for me. It's nowhere near as powerful as Cyclonic Rift, but it's definitely one that you can consider. And at just under a dollar, it's much more affordable. Another card you might want to take a look at is Devastation Tide, which is currently just 82 cents. It's a sorcery for 3 blue blue, and it says return all non land permanents to their owner's hands, and it's got Miracle for 1 and a blue. This one is definitely not one-sided like Cyclonic Rift because it affects you as well, but it's still a good way to set everyone back so that you can try to even the playing field. And although it's a sorcery, you can cast it for its miracle cost on your opponent's turn if you happen to get lucky and draw it as your first card that turn. Now you definitely shouldn't be counting on that, but there are some decks that can work to manipulate their library to make it happen. Regardless, this is definitely seen as a more fair version of Cyclonic Rift. Now there are some decks like Artifact Storm decks that actually want to bounce their own boards. But for the most part, this card is just a good way to reset the board. Next up, there's this placement wave which comes in at 42 cents. It's a sorcery for X Blue Blue and it says return all non-land permanents with converted mana costs X or less to their owner's hand. So this is going to mess with everyone's board, but you can determine that X value. So in a way, this can be a one-sided board wipe in the right situation with the right deck. If you've got a lot of permanents, that have a high converted mana cost, you might just be able to bounce everyone else's stuff but your own. This is definitely more situational than Cyclonic Rift though, and again, at sorcery speed. A card with a more broad application, and one of my favorites is Aethergale. Currently it's only 39 cents, so it's a very budget-friendly card. It's a sorcery for 3 blue blue, and it says return 6 target non-land permanents to the owner's hands. This can help you temporarily deal with a ton of pesky non-land permanents. For 5 mana, you're getting 6 targets, which is a fantastic rate. Now, unlike Cyclonic Rift, this can't get everything, but you can pick and choose the best 6 targets to get. But with that targeting, there's a slight disadvantage in comparison to Cyclonic Rift. First off, because it doesn't say up to, you need exactly 6 single targets. And obviously, you can't target anything with Hexproof or Shroud. But still, this is a fantastic card that has done a ton of work for me. Another great budget alternative to consider is Aetherize. Currently, it's just 25 cents, so it can fit into pretty much any budget. It's an instant for 3 and a blue, and it says return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. Now, this card is nowhere near as flexible as Cyclonic Rift, but there are plenty of times when people use Cyclonic Rift to save themselves from an attack. And in that scenario, this pretty much does the same thing. Now, you're only going to be setting one player back and only by bouncing the creatures that just attacked. It's still a very valuable piece of protection, though, and can come in really handy in the right situation. And finally, one last alternative to consider is Evacuation. Now, this one is nearly $3, but again, that's a lot more affordable than Cyclonic Rift. 
It's an instant for three blue blue, and it says return all creatures to their owner's hands. So this won't hit any non-land permanents, but it does hit all creatures, including your own. One big benefit, though, is that you can cast this at instant speed. So like Cyclonic Rip, this can come out of nowhere and to save you from a tough situation. Now, you're also going to be setting yourself back, but again, there are some decks that don't run many creatures or don't really care if they get their creatures bounced. It's not nearly as impactful as Cyclonic Rift, but it's got plenty of applications. There is no card out there that can directly replace Cyclonic Rift. There's a reason it's a format staple that sees so much play. It's essentially a one-sided board wipe that sets everyone else way back at instant speed. Without a reprint, its price is just going to keep climbing. So it's always a good idea to have some budget alternatives in mind. But now let's look at another commander staple with Mirari's Wake. Now Mirari's Wake isn't used in anywhere near as many decks as Cyclonic Rift, but few cards are. It's still a very impactful card and it's nearly at $15 right now. It's an enchantment for 3 green white. It says creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 and whenever you tap land for mana, add 1 mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. Now the anthem effect is nice, but people aren't playing this card for that piece. Doubling up the mana that your lands produce is extremely powerful. On its own, this card essentially takes you from 5 mana to 12 mana on your next turn if you hit your land drop. If you can untap with this in play, this gives you a huge advantage and puts you way ahead of your opponents. Basically this is going to double up the effectiveness of all of your land ramp spells as well. And green's got plenty of ways to ramp to put you even further ahead. While putting you ahead of your opponents, it's going to set you up for some really explosive turns. And while that Anthem effect might not be the reason that you play it, it is a nice addition. But at $15, it isn't exactly cheap. So let's take a look at some more budget-friendly options. First up, there's Zendikar Resurgent, which comes in at $3.29. It's an enchantment for 5 green green that says whenever you tap a land for mana, add 1 mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. So in place of that Anthem effect, you get some extra draw. On top of that, because this is just green, you can use it in a wide variety of decks. The main difference between these two cards, though, is that this costs two more. Now that doesn't mean that this is a bad card. Mari's Way can just be more impactful since it can come down earlier. Going from 5 to 12 mana earlier can be much more impactful than going from 7 to 16 later. And again, that 7 to 16 is assuming that you hit a later land drop. But for most decks, I think I much prefer having that draw trigger instead of the Anthem. So Zendikar Resurgent might not be as impactful earlier in the game, but can be much more impactful later. It can ramp you a ton and be an engine that keeps you going. Another budget alternative to consider is Dictate of Karametra. It's an enchantment for 3 green green and currently it's just 52 cents. It has flash and whenever a player taps land for mana, that player adds 1 mana to his or her mana pool of any type that land produced. So like Barney Spike, this only costs 5 mana but there's one main difference. This might double up your mana production but it also doubles up your opponents. There actually aren't too many cards like Barney Spike that just double up your own mana. Obviously it's just better to ramp yourself and not your opponents. But that doesn't mean that this card is bad. In fact, it was on my most recent episode of Quest Recorders. The big difference maker for this card is the fact that it has flash. Because of that, you can cast it right before your turn and take advantage of it before your opponents can. If you've got some impactful cards in your hand, this can set you way ahead of your opponents. And unlike Mirai's Wake, this can come out of nowhere. With Mirai's Wake, you have to cast it on your own turn. Because of that, you probably won't have too many extra lands that you can utilize with it. Also, your opponents will probably realize that you're setting up for a big turn and will try to stop you. Dictative Karametra will give them a lot less time to react. Now, taking all factors into account, Mirai's Wake will be better. Only doubling up your own mana and not your opponents is a big difference. Dictative Karametra, though, is still a fantastic card and I think it's very underrated. Then there's Keeper Progenitus, which can be great in the right deck. It's under $2, so it's definitely a budget consideration in comparison to Mirai's Wake. It's a 1-3 Elf Druid that costs 3 and a green. It says whenever a player taps a Mountain, Forest, or Plains for mana, that player adds 1 mana to his or her mana pool of any type that land produced. So this card is much more specific on what it's doubling. So chances are you're going to get to take much more advantage of it than your opponents can. If you're running this in a Naya deck with a ton of mountains, forests, or plains, you're going to be in good shape. And chances are your opponents are going to have some non-basics or some islands or swamps. So this is going to double up your mana, but only help your opponents a little bit. Now this is a creature, so it can be more easily removed. There aren't too many one-sided or nearly one-sided mana doubling effects, so we'll take what we can get. Another one to consider for green decks is Vernal Bloom. Currently it's $3.44, but again that's much cheaper than Rory's Wake. It's an enchantment that costs 3 and a green, and it says whenever a force is tapped for mana, its controller adds green to their mana pool. So again, like Keeper Progenitus, this is much more specific on what it's doubling. So although this can help out your opponents, it's probably going to help you out a lot more than them. In a mono green deck especially, this can be an absolute bomb. If you hit your land drop on the turn after you cast it, you're going to have access to 10 mana. That's extremely early in the game and can put you way ahead of your opponents. In a mono green deck with enough basics, this is even better than Rory's Wake in my opinion. But Mirari's Wake definitely fits in a wider variety of decks though. Doubling up just your own mana is extremely powerful and that's why Mirari's Wake is such a good staple. The budget alternatives aren't perfect, but many of them can do a good imitation. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite budget alternative is. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck tacks. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tack dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you.
If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one. <laughs>